everybody. Fun day. Fun day. June 7, 2021. 20, we're going to get started with the Weird Things podcast here in just a minute. Hello, everybody. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah. Oh. Come on, oh, baby. Whoa, whoa. Uh, yeah, it was fun. It was fun recognizing just Flint Flossie in the wild and then seeing him in the credits. Uh, uh, my daughter's got me watching Camp Camp. Oh, yeah, on the, the yeah. yeah. It's animation, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, baby. Flip floss. Flip that up. Yeah. yeah. And then I had to take her on a journey of, uh, no, 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 we know this guy. And, and I didn't do the total dad thing. Total dad move would have been to go to art, multiple interviews with Flint Floss. With Flint Floss. But instead, yeah. I just I just played um, the uh, 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 treat me like a pirate and give me that <laughs> <laughs> After we watched, uh, did I mention I like to dance? Uh, well, that's 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 the iconic oh, Flossy yeah. video. Yeah, ten years, right? Time flies. Time flies. Well, yeah, our guest, uh, our, our our guest today uh, has uh, uh, also reminded me of of uh, our our first interaction mm -hmm. uh, on iTrix, which is like cow. I. I there's not a lot of people that really remember. I mean, I, 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 don't I think I'm the with, last one. No, I don't interact with a lot of magic people fair, much anymore. Fair. So uh, I think amongst magic people, older, like people, you know, above the age of 30, <laughs> uh, I think iTrix is still well remembered for those that are that are into that. But uh, yeah, man, time in a in a mother effort. It, it makes. I'm told it makes fools of us all. <laughs> it does. It does. And I, and I, I for one, am sick of it, Bryce. Uh, I'm Let's take time back. <laughs> Let's get it back. It's about time we stood up to time. <laughs> <laughs> all right, everybody. Hello. Thank you for joining us. Oh, I got to turn the chat on here. Boop. There we go. Boop. Boop. All right. Uh, you guys ready to start a show? Hey, yeah. yeah. All right. Here we go. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to the Weird Things Podcast. I'm your host, as always, Bryce Castillo, and as as I always am, mm -hmm. joined by Justin Robert Young. Hi, friend. How are you? And Brian Brushwood. Oh, so usual. And, and as always, our special guest, as we are always having, Joe Diamond is joining us here. Thanks Mr. for having Joe me. Diamond. Hello. Yes, sir. Joe Diamond's yes. here. You, you have to call me Mr. Joe Diamond Ms. the rest of the uh, time I'm here now. Joe but... Diamond. <laughs> Actually, you have to say Misto that ends with an A-H. <laughs> hey, mister. <laughs> are you Mr. Joe Diamond? Mr. Joe Diamond. <laughs> Mr. Joe Diamond. Will you give us a conjuring shape with a oh. change? <laughs> uh, so you're here to shoot Scam School videos. Scam yes. right? Nation. Scam Nation. Scam Nation. Uh, one might say that uh, just philosophically you know because it defined the genre like like in the way that the all all sodas coke yes yeah yeah no that that is a cultural thing here in texas we don't distinguish between any of our sodas and we call mm -hmm. all magic tutorials scam, scam schools, schools. Scam yeah. schools. <laughs> it's right. just like a, yeah i was watching a scam school the you... other day learned how to do the the push through pass see that's the thing in florida we call all television shows full stop scam school so like remember <laughs> that scam school when kramer showed up and he had just gotten the job oh my god yeah. i remember the scam school where don johnson wasn't wearing socks at all yeah. as he solved crimes that was a great scam school yeah remember Classic michael school. amar's easy to master scam school, scam school. Yeah. oh that yeah. dude now yeah. that yeah. i think about it yeah. well, it was on that. it was on eight tracks yeah <laughs> Right. Uh, actually, uh, before we even begin, uh, uh, it probably is worth mentioning this year. Uh, if you have nothing going on Labor Day weekend, um, uh, I, we're going to be at uh, uh, we meaning me and the uh, scam stuff uh, team. I'll be giving a lecture. Michael Lammer will will be there at TAOM, the Texas Association of Magicians. Uh, discounted rates still available. Prices are about to go up. But uh, but that is but, in but, Austin, Texas. Yep, yep. And yes. and and man, if if you've been itching to to get out to a to a con, uh, it feels like right now is a good time to go do it. Uh, if you use promo code scam at checkout, uh, we'll put together a hundred dollar mystery bucket for you. Uh, uh -huh. I don't know, bucket not included. It'll probably yeah, it'll probably it'll be probably a bad. be that's in a the paper mystery. mache goose. Don't hold us to that either. <laughs> that's right. right. 
Hello, everybody. Welcome to The Weird Things. Uh, I've got some stories for us here today. Mm, a, curious, a curious and suspicious move by you, Castillo. <laughs> well, this one may not be too, too strange. I think everybody who, who saw this coming saw this coming. Jeff Bezos, newly retired from running Amazon, will be blasting off into space with his brother. Yeah. The multi-billionaire will take off in a Blue Origin crew capsule using a reusable New Shepard rocket. The, Bezos the Bezoses will touch the Carmen line and return back to Earth. The crew capsule holds six people, the two Bezos and the winner of an online auction. As of this morning, it was at about $2.8 million. So wait, I have a question about this. When I read this press release this morning. Yes. Bryce, can you please bring up when that auction ends? Sure, I can do that. Uh, because I'm pretty sure it's in June. June 12th. June 12th. So it is. that is in a couple days. Seven, four, uh, six, uh, Day five. A little five over days. a Four, month three, later. Two, <laughs> that happened. One day. You, <laughs> you literally, so a little over a month after you win this auction, you go to space. Yeah. Like this is not a thing where you're training or, or, or like, so I'm, that's right. They're I'm, going on July 20th. So a little over a month. A little over weeks. a month. So it's like, I had always, you know, gotten the sense that. Uh, uh, even for space tourism, there was a certain level of, of of fitness that was going to be kind of required, but I guess not for well, this the, trip. The, the, they got Apple Watches now. Like we could test, we could screen people faster too. Dude, that's gonna be the best. That's gonna be the best Apple Watch alert when it's like your friend was in space and there's a <laughs> rocket. There, there definitely is for any of the traditional space institutions, uh, NASA or, or uh, uh, what's the whatever former Soviet or uh, 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 Russian, uh, we or, go space now Russian space agency uh, yeah. uh, perfectly uh, legal space agency. <laughs> 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 we had nothing uh. to do with your ransomware attack space <laughs> agency. Um, the uh, I, I remember when our friend Richard Garriott was going to space, one of the things that they have to do is make sure you are, quote unquote, medically perfect was the phrase that he used. And I, and, and I got the impression that he was as though he was told to rehearse that phrase yeah. so that he could say it a lot. Uh, and it now, was, was his was his trip just space tourism, go up, go down, yeah, or was he actually going up and he, doing work? He went to the the ISS. Uh, and by the way, uh, uh, in America, they refused to acknowledge you as an astronaut just because you went up in a, a and spacecraft did astronaut and things. hung out on a yeah. ISS for a week or two and then went down. Apparently, in America, that doesn't make you an, an astronaut. So technically, mm -hmm. he is a, a cosmonaut because <laughs> Russia doesn't care. They're uh, like, yeah. uh, you're definitely cosmonaut. Oh, so strong. I would say, like bear. I would say making it to the International Space Station counts. For me, I, that I, counts. I, I, uh, uh, yes. The answer is yes, absolutely, <laughs> indeed. But in, in Richard's case, there was, uh, you know, after a full like MRI and all that stuff, there was like a cyst, uh, I, on, on his liver, I think. Oh, no. Um, uh, I mean, I mean a minor, totally benign thing, but it was technically possible that it could become a problem once. Cause I mean, again, no, no hospital, ain't no in, in space. There are no hospitals. Yeah. Right. Uh, so, uh, he had to have surgery to have the thing removed and then, uh, then spent, a month in in Baikonur, Kazakhstan, where he was, you know, watching scam schools. Yeah, uh, <laughs> literally. Only I mean it literally. <laughs> the yeah. actual mm -hmm. scam schools, uh, uh, and then ended up doing a scam school trick on the ISS. But um, but yeah, you're 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 correct. I I think the big thing here is that you're not going into orbit. Mm -hmm. You're not going to stay there. Um, you are sitting down, and then thirty minutes later, you will be back on Earth. So, right. but all right. Also, you could have a heart attack and die, right? Yeah. You could get eaten by a leopard. I mean, I what's the question, my, buddy? My point is, is that, like, <laughs> this Dude, is not I, a thing. I went to Action Park. I don't understand. All like, I'm I signed a waiver. This. All I'm saying is that every time that I've ever heard a story about space anything, it usually has a long lead time. And I presumed it's so everybody could get into whatever shape or cross whatever thresholds and milestones and take the EKG that shows. And then, you know, the doctor jumps out just when you think you're done to startle you to make sure that you're really <laughs> like on top of everything. Mm -hmm. uh, this just, it, I don't know. It, it, it 
was that that was the 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 news that struck me the most was not that Jeff Bezos was going to space. It was not that he was bringing his brother. It was not that they made a very slickly reality television style uh, uh, announcement uh, of to to commemorate all of it, but rather that someone's going to pay a gigantic amount of money to go to space and then they're going to do it like two weeks later. Jo Joe may be able to back me up on this, but what I assume is given that it is such a short ride, there's only one evaluation you want, and that's the psych evaluation. <laughs> like, like just, just take a few of these quizzes, uh, take these five Facebook quizzes, and yes. find out whether or not you're going to unbuckle yourself and try to beat up Jeff Bezos in space and yes. commit the first space <laughs> murder. Beyond yeah. that, don't care. Well, Yeah, or just have a panic attack, or just, you know, suddenly, like... You know, oh, never had depression before, but when I saw the curvature of the Earth, I realized how small everything was and came back to Earth and wanted to be back. I mean, we've seen Inception. We know how this goes. Well, and, <laughs> and also, it's like, uh, uh, this is a public thing, right? So, like, yeah. who's going to, what's going to happen when Logan Paul snipes the top spot <laughs> and, like, kicks Jeff Bezos in the ween, like, so he can do the ultimate space prank? <sighs> So, so that Brian was my question wants is that to happen so badly. <laughs> my my question is, you know, the, the capsule can hold six people. The two Bezoses. Let's say you get slot number three. Who are you putting in four, five, and six? Mm, if we're depends feeling, on oh, wait, if the they're pod? coming back or not. We get to pick, or yeah, yeah. Mm. You you are going to be in the capsule with the Bezoses. You get three, three extra of the four seats. people the least in this popular room. members of BTS. <laughs> <laughs> And we all know who they are. Yeah. Uh, Don't at me, Army. <laughs> oh, you know what? Uh, question. Do they all find out who else is invited? <laughs> They don't have to, I suppose. <laughs> Can I keep it secret? Okay, Can you I just make it a make surprise? This reality show. Okay, but it's, <laughs> unless I, you are hiding here. about twenty million dollars somewhere, I mean, this is this is. <laughs> I, I, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Each of them doesn't know who the other ones are. Yeah. yeah. Uh, like uh, 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 Elon Musk. Okay. <laughs> okay. Bezos' ex-wife. <laughs> Joe <laughs> Biden and Trump. <laughs> and we will make the first interstellar awkward party. <laughs> yeah. Now, I, now I believe Jeff Bezos has, has spoken to President, former President Trump and President Biden, though. Like, oh, so you think it would be a real fun I bet time? They're, like I bet everybody they, would be having a great time. Yeah, I bet they like our our chums. What if I Trump, bet there's no no well, anxiety. Not a lot of jokes that I can make about Trump and and Mackenzie Be Bezos. Uh, but yeah, yeah. Uh, 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 just imagine that it was something that would end the show. Like I thought, I, like I thought you were gonna say like a uh, uh, an ox and a leopard. Like I thought you were really going for some like <laughs> oil and water type of type of choice. Right, hold on, let me work. What on are this you a now. Chinese fable? Like well, this is a fun an podcast. A <laughs> this is a fun podcast with my friends. <laughs> I'm already trying to make it awkward, but now you've laid down the guy. You threw thrown down the gauntlet. Uh, like 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 uh uh. uh Oh man! Yeah, I've thrown down the gauntlet no, of yeah, Simba yeah. and I'd also, Scar. I'd also, I'd also like a plow and a stern father and and the soil <laughs> that is rich and rewarding. I don't know, man. Maybe I'll. Me you're right. Biden's a dud. I'd keep Trump, but I'd throw in Dave Chappelle and uh and 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 I'd stick with Elon Musk. Those would Chappelle's be my 18 minute monologue about this would be fantastic. I, I, look, that's I, I hope he gives it while we're in orbit. And I, and I, <laughs> Bezos is like that's one small purchase from a bazillionaire. No, here's the reality one. show. It's three different comedians. And then they all have to come back to Earth, and who does the oh, best? They're set all going to be it. babies. They're all gonna, if they're going to unify on one thing. It's, about, it's that I was a jerk for inviting them. They're going to go. <laughs> they're going to go up, and they're going to come back with a DV tape of "We love the 20s. We love the 2020s." <laughs> yeah. Actually, all right, hold on. Now, let in me, my now, mind, hold hold that's on. all now six now comedians do this. in one room is they make VH1. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Why don't we get my last three? Why don't fi we get some cameras? Okay, fi final, we final answer. My last three slots go to the Auntie Donna boys. <laughs> oh, <that's laughs> because, because I don't know if Bezos, any of the Bezoses are into their type of humor, but I will really enjoy it. They've got that. a bit on their podcast. Shout out to the Auntie Donna podcast where they're ending 
every episode by recapping what happened on the episode to the tune of Billy Joel's We Didn't Start the Fire. That's right. <laughs> and because they revel in making it awkward for each other, the runner last time was that they then dared one of them to do another one, and then they tried to push it to a... They successfully pushed it to a third, and then... Uh, yeah, Zach was unable to to sell a fourth one, but uh, listen to the Auntie Donna show. But I would also love the idea that like they would just blather the entire time and and uh, just do shtick uh, and and ruin Jeff Bezos' Jeff, life work. Jeff, what if I make a poo while we're in orbit? I think I oh, did you make a piddle? I Somebody did. get this monkey off of me. That's that's I what that I think Jeff be, Bezos that would be. Like. That would be good. Uh, uh, but uh, what, what do you, uh, Bryce? Do we know what the what, what the highest bid is? I presume it's probably rising by the second. Uh, as of this morning, it was two point eight million dollars. Two point eight mil. And, and, but we don't know who. No, uh, not at this moment. Good, because I asked them to keep it quiet. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say <laughs> it's probably you know a, a couple people in silica, a, a couple like the lesser known members of the PayPal mafia and. Some Miami ah, stripper go. who got tipped in Bitcoin last We're night. We're in high bid, three point well, two million. Three point two right now. There's another question. What if like Elon Musk says to someone like, "Hey, I will pay for you to go on this as long as you sabotage it and just make it awkward." But 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 not actually sabotage not, not, not anything. Actually sabotage, because, but, but just make but, it but instead make it unpleasant like, for everyone. Um, uh, I'm gonna need you to uh, uh, smell bad. Yes. I'm gonna Don't need shower you the whole to, week like, before. You're gonna be given an opportunity to chime in. Uh, I need you to be a a preemptive interrupter. Um, I need you to be one of those people that is constantly negging <laughs> <laughs> Jeff Bezos, where he's like, man, it's so great that you almost hit orbital flight. I'm so excited. This yeah. is a very exciting yeah. almost around the world flight. <laughs> um, so 2.7. What do you think this tops out at? What? Three point two. Right yeah, three point two. Oh, 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 yeah. Three point two. All yeah. right. So what We're do you breaking think? News. What, what do you think it uh, tops out at? I mean, ten. Somewhere around ten. I mean, so it's in five days. Well, so I believe, and they're doing like I, a live. I, I believe twenty million the was uh, the going rate for like a full-on space tourism. Spend some time at the ISS. This is not even in orbit. Sorry. Um, right. uh, it's it's very high up. And over in 30 minutes, I think it tops out, but it does. But you go with Bezos. Be first, yeah. I'll say 4.7. 4. 4.7. I mean, is it the ultimate networking opportunity? <laughs> are you best friends with Bezos after that? Probably, uh, proper right? networking happens when somebody is in a position to be receptive to your message. And I'm going to guess that Bezos will have, I don't know, a little bit else on his mind. I mean, but that's like not if you record. You're the always gonna while you're going to be bound to Bezos and his brother as the time that you all went to space, all right. right? Hold on, hold on. Yeah. Crazy idea. This is a terrible idea. <laughs> okay. Shouldn't say what I'm about to say. Don't then. If you want to be remembered, okay, uh, for all of history, I don't. Oh, this is going to be bad. Gonna be really bad, Jay. There, there's a lot of firsts that ain't happened yet. Uh, okay. Okay. Now. Okay. Now he could uh, go blue with this. I think he could I save think this. He could. Yeah. I can't read his face because he's trying to keep it. He he thinks <laughs> it's funny because I'm seeing a wry smile creep. He's getting a little bit of the half of this little tuck, right here. Tuck, tuck a little something. Uh, <laughs> you could be the first person to get wicked high in space. Okay. You could be the first person to commit suicide in space. Oh, my God. Wow. This is why the site wow. like that. Like that. Wow. On a, on a wow. ionide capsule. Like, like, like. You think they're not going to uh, check? Only if you say Hail Playboy? Hydra at the end. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. How great would that be? Like, you screw up two empires at once. Here it is, their first majestic flight. And you're also going to take down the MCU at the same why time. Why exactly? Hail Hydra. That, that went from wow. Harold and Kumar to Faces of death in, in like three syllables uh, brian's brian's wrist just lit up it says you're not eligible for space anymore yeah. you can't do this no anymore more, <laughs> no more weed or space for this this fellow but you know who can have more weed in space who? or your friends at the weird things podcast yeah. if oh, you subscribe man. over at patreon.com slash weird things hey patreon.com slash weird things is where you need to go make sure that we keep doing this show each and every monday and if you are on the patreon then you get our after show called after things where we talk about things after weird things mostly 
uh, uh, all sorts of entrepreneurial and creative advice and, and question answering. Oh, it's so simple. Uh, all you got to do is head on over there. Patreon.com slash weird things. Sorry. Uh, I would take up uh, in the rocket my friends Justin, Brian, and Joe. So. Oh. 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 You take the high road and where pieces of garbage. That's right. The high road is up to the Carmen line. Yeah. Uh, yes. <laughs> so all four of us are sighted individuals. We can all see. Yes. Um. So that's kind of the perspective we're putting on this, everybody. What would you do? If you suddenly lost your vision, you woke up one day, you can't see, nope, you're not in pain. You go to the doctor. They say you're not about to explode. Uh, how, how do you adapt to, I, I, I'm not, I'm not quite familiar with the, uh, uh, the world of uh, those who do not have full vision. I, I was not aware that sudden explosion was something that they had to worry about. Just saying. Yeah. If. Okay. Everything's yeah. fine except for you have you have no vision and and I presume that part of the doctor's visit is that they tell us that they don't know why it happened and they don't know if it'll, if it'll ever come back. Uh, yes. Yeah. Got There's it. nothing okay. to worry about except for the fact that you cannot see. Uh the first thing I do is I mush my palms against my eyes and see like even those fireworks, the phosphemes, are they gone? Oh my goodness. Mm. And we don't know. If if you are if you are hard of seeing, please let us know. Email us nashgum at gmail dot com. No, the first I, thing I, that I do is go to all my friends and touch their face <laughs> like they like they do with blind people oh, in movies, where I'm like, I just want to see you, and I just yeah. I, I, and specifically I do it to my very germaphobic friends who are like horrified <laughs> by any kind of oh hand my contact. god, I'm and also like, no, I'm blind now, and I just touch their face. How all the time. how how long how long can you hold on to like even though you clearly recognize their voice and it's just like hey it's and they and now yeah hey it's me Justin yeah. and I was just like ah Justin I. May I make sure? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Just all and then he gets over. hands on a hard like body, just a it, finger up the nose, ah, shoo, <laughs> right into my hands, and then right back <laughs> on the face. So I have a weird perspective on this because yep. Brian, I, you know, being you know in the mystic arts, there are tricky fake ways to blindfold yourself, and there are real ways, and yes. some things you can do genuinely blindfolded, and not mm -hmm. so much. But that said, part of whether you're going to do it genuinely or not, you have to first learn how you act when you genuinely can't see. Right. So I have walked around for like a day and a half. Pretending with, to with, be with, blind. With, my, with a blindfold on, with a genuine actual blindfold on around oh, the wow. apartment. So I, 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 uh, I have walked not, around my neighborhood. But I have walked around for a full day going, ah, <laughs> with my eyes closed <laughs> and my arms out We know. You, 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 yes. you do that every Wednesday. Yeah. Like, ah. Uh, that's green that, and Brian that's actually that. Brian's team building warm up exercise. But it, it right. was ah. this is this is super super Ever? meta magic nerd stuff. But like I could feel like what kind what brands of decks of cards just by the feel taking them out of the box. Oh wow! In in and, just doing uh, for like twenty four hours and and actively, yeah, well, and like, also because I'm a magic nerd and I've held cards in my hand every day sure, my whole yeah. life. But it was it was very fascinating. I didn't have you know. If I were doing a show right now, I'd say, oh, yeah, some of my senses kind of heightened a little. I'm not really. I mean, it It was more so It was more so to, like, just get a feel for it. And the other aspect of it, too, it, it kind of, because I had a huge fear growing up that I would lose control of my hands or control of my sight. Mm. Uh, anxious we, only uh, child uh, here. For the record, <laughs> so, we've publicly talked about our fear of losing control of the audience. Yes, exactly. And so the the whole thing with it was kind of a slight way to conquer that, but also like it is one of those things where it's like, oh, I I adapted then, I would adapt now. I'd be more I'd be less concerned about how I would get through the world and more concerned with how it actually happened. Uh, so Cuz I I feel like a genuinely blind mentalist is a hell of a publicity hook. So I, I, oh, so I you're like, I'd be like, right, fine right, with this that. This is really just kind of a lateral move. In fact, yeah, I, I might yeah, be exactly. advancing here exactly. if I have a genuine it, disability. Yeah, but then from that standpoint, it's like I would just want to know why it happened. Was it genetic? Was it everything else? Like, I you see. know, my wife and I aren't haven't decided if we we're gonna have kids yet. But like, if we do, could this happen to them? Like, those would be the questions that go through my mind, not how I'm gonna yeah. navigate. 
personally. I gotcha. Uh, se- separate side note, I've noticed that uh, uh, as we've talked about, like uh, uh, I'm I'm a light sleeper yes. and I wake up and um, uh, uh, man, have I noticed that uh, almost at like a, a visceral level, like I can hear a single door get clicked or or I can hear just the single jingle of a dog's move. I I can feel the air pressure change when uh, the AC kicks on and the door kind of half closes. Yeah. Uh, and and um, I, I would imagine that all of that, uh, th- there are only brief moments where I have nothing else going on except for to sort of understand, oh, that's the drone of the concert venue down the street. That's a car driving by. Is it a big car or a small car? You know, like, I mean, it's not, it's not rocket science to figure that out. It's just that normally... You're not in a position to try to pay attention to those things. Yeah. Uh, so, so I could totally imagine developing those senses. Uh, yeah, I'd be terrified. Uh, is my is my <laughs> short answer. It would be the the scariest thing that ever happened in my life, and I would uh, uh, I would I would I would try my best to to either recover what I could or to just make my way through life. All all, all jokes aside, do, do you do you think you could last ten weeks through say a course? Mm, say. Wait a minute. When, now, when you say a course, mm-hmm. like an obstacle course or an instructional course, like, a little column A, a little column B. Oh my god! <laughs> oh god! Is this like Blind Ninja Training School? What is happening? A ten-week program le- led by Dr. Laura Thaler of Durham University, UK, took twenty-one particip- participants sighted and blind, and taught humans how to echolocate. Using their tongue, using tongue clicks. So I have heard of this. Uh, this is where, uh, when they, they first start, before you 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 do the uh, the clicky with your tongue, uh, you get uh, one of those 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 clicker yeah, dog click clicker. trainers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, um, oof, I I don't want to quote exactly exactly what I was told, but but uh, th- there's a friend of the show who is a fan of 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 Scam School and Scam Nation who came out to one of the shoots. And I was fascinated. I was like, what is the show like? You know, a, a magic inherently normally thought of as a visual art. Yeah. What is oh, that like? Oh, this is a blind fan. Correct, correct. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Uh, 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 to a non-sighted person. Yeah. And, uh, and he's like, oh, well, you know, some of them are like this, and I enjoy them because I and other ones are like this or whatever. And I, and I asked him about echolocation. I was like, does that actually work? It, it work? And he was just like, yeah, but you sound like... <laughs> And the next word started with an R. Oh. <laughs> and that, that was his reason that, that he didn't do echolocation. He says it definitely works. You can get a sense of what the world around you what is. What a complicated character <laughs> you oh, just man. created. Oh. Like, oh. this is a real, like, A24 movie, <laughs> uh, like, character that's been that's been made. Uh, uh God. So yeah, so so this is something that you can learn in in ten weeks is is echolocation. Yeah, th- so this was a ten week program. It was twenty sessions, so I guess two a week, about two to three hours per session. Uh, it f- they the researchers found that a neither age nor sightedness was a limiting factor in this. Eighty three percent of participants involved reported better independence and well being. Uh, they also found that n- people who were new to echolocation did about as well as seven expert ec- echolocators. Uh, so it's something easy to pick up is and something, it has psychological benefits. It mm. it's a it's a it's kind of a big to do, you know, you're you're doing a multiple week yeah. program. Uh I wasn't kidding. There they do have like a virtual maze that they have the that they have the participants go in through to to train. Um wow. so it's it's not a small task, but it does seem surprisingly effective well and and it is one of those things that uh uh i don't know i think maybe i played like 20 or 30 minutes with this but walk around snapping or whatever and it's Mm -hmm. like you you could tell when there's an echo around you there's probably a wall you know Mm -hmm. you know when you're inside versus outside you know when uh uh uh, you're in the middle of a bunch of trees versus near a street corner i mean it's and and the human brain is is incredibly sophisticated and smart uh, I'll, I'll it, it, let's say something like this situation uh, in the hypothetical happens. Uh, that's a lot of brain, you know, visual uh, decoding that uh, your brain kind of processes it to, I guess, to dumb it, to, to simplify it a lot. 
you open up a lot of, of power by not being able to see. Of you know, bandwidth, yeah. Of band I mean, you, you, have giant, you have giant chunks are, of your brain that are normally very busy. Suddenly reading and they looking. got nothing yeah. to do. So it's just like, yeah, I'll take some of that info. Uh, let me see. Uh, this is a map as best I could tell of what's going on here. I mean, even, you know, with uh, when, when, when we record audio for like, the, the YouTube videos that we do when you're in, when you're listening to it. And if like, I'm wearing kind of in-ear little plug uh, headphones today, when you hear them with that, you, you can, you can hear it yourself. You get such a, a, a stronger sense of the acoustics of the room just through a microphone. Um, uh, but now you're doing that every day for uh, the rest of your life or what, what, whatever the situation may be. Yeah. And I guess uh, on top of that, you also have, um, you know, various sensors. Uh, we, we've talked about uh, 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 kind of cameras in, in on your back. You'll be wearing a vest that has like a 300 by 200 matrix of, of pressure points. And or uh, uh, alternately, there's sort of visual sensors on your tongue because you have you have so many nerve endings on your tongue. What what at first will m much like a cochlear implant, a as I understand it, seem like so much white noise kind of becomes like, oh, this is the feeling on my tongue of an open hallway in front of me that I can safely feel like I can confidently walk yeah. down or whatever, uh, which ultimately is, is all that really matters. Yeah, I mean, I guess that part of it is also just, uh, you know, because our brain is sorting through so much information that reducing a, a fraction of it can help us process what we, what we, what we get in uh, uh, just that much better. But if you're... You know, doing something like echolocation where you're constantly kind of putting a thing out there. I guess I, I wonder whether or not there's a an, an an update on something like that that you could do with like uh, ear pods, like 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 Raycons or Airbuds or something like that, where uh there would m maybe be something that is like constantly being sent out from your iPhone that might not be audible like for for humans, but you can hear a representation. Of so, that echo uh, in your ears. S mm -hmm. Similar to, let's say you got noise canceling headphones. Part of the noise canceling, like turning it off, is it's almost like you're wearing hearing aids. You're hearing the world around you. Yeah. Uh, but then also over that is overlaid a bit more information. Yes. Like, is it basically. bright? Is it dark? Is there an object? You know, within six feet. Oh, of you I was, or... I was even thinking of just literally echolocation. So you would just be hearing, like, as if you were making the. You had a device sounding like that a real ah, Rembrandt, uh, right? Um, <laughs> uh, uh, a Rolls Royce. Uh, <laughs> you know that uh, uh, that you would just be hearing a representation of that. Although that would be that would be crazy if you just had maybe some discreet little camera, and you had that AI generator that we uh, viewed on here, where it was just saying like, "Open hallway." Like girl, oh. green shirt. Mm. Oh, I I would imagine. Let's say at an even baser level. Let's say you had uh, a, something a that sounded like boom, boom, <laughs> boom, boom, boom. <laughs> no, no, not that bass. Uh, you're you're wearing just a, a vest or something, and and at the back collar is some kind of camera, and uh, basically as you walk along with regular audio, you hear kind of a wee, 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 which, which represents, you know, the world changing behind you. And then you're seated and you're just at a kind of a woo. And then uh, all of a sudden you haven't moved, but all of a sudden you begin to hear a wee and, and you're like, somebody is coming up behind me gotcha. and, that, and you just Dopp know it. Doppler radar style. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Yeah, basically. exactly. Yeah. Huh. Well, and, um, uh, we, we have, we have like a visual machine learning is we we've talked and covered so much in this show, but like, you know, you think of like the little Waymo cars or what the, uh, the self-driving cars and they have all that radar technology or they use cameras on the Teslas and stuff. Like there's, there's probably something really clever you could do with that. Whether it's like a visual, you know, a siren system. I, when you, when you described a vest with like, um, like a matrix on the back, I almost, thought you were kind of describing like a, like a mini map of sort. If someone had like a top down little solid snake mini map and you felt it on your, on your back, um, I don't know. That well, might and, be an and, interesting and innate way to use touch. The, there, uh, and not only that, but, but your brain. It's like an odd place to put it. What, on your back? 
the mini map on your back. Well, yeah, that's a big Y. I mean, what else are you using? You're going to look at it? No, you have it like on your wrist or something like that. Like a little, little. I mean, it's a mini map. But, no, but no, 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 in no, my no. in like, my like, mind, like, the, like, the, the they they actually touch you. Like yeah, like yeah. a that's, like that's, a massaging so, chair. So 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 picture a oh, like a braille oh, braille so on your back. It's, it's on your back. It's doing you're, that. You're, you're oh, feeling it. You're pressing against it. Against you. Got you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, yeah. Sorry, yeah, I misunderstood. Yeah. So 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 if, uh, the bigger the surface area, the more you'd be able to feel. Yeah. But but I can I can imagine a world where. With with enough uh, equipment, uh, uh, whether it be uh, haptic feedback gloves uh, and uh, uh, I don't know, you know, strap a like the the other day I walked outside of the boundary for my Oculus Quest Two and it flipped over to just camera mode. Yeah, and I felt no need to take this thing off of my face. Yeah, uh, the entire walk over, you know, through four different rooms, looking around for batteries, looking for batteries, not knowing where they were, finding batteries, looking down at the representation of my hands, opening up the controllers, replacing the batteries and all that stuff, mm -hmm. then navigating my way back all at no point were my actual eyes seeing the actual world. Yeah, but it felt perfectly normal. Uh, I would imagine there's no reason that that with enough input, you know, it, it, it maybe all the way. Imagine full body uh, uh, stuff, like like all the way down to. Uh, it's really a matter of training. Like like uh, if you feel a thump on your back left calf, that means uh, and 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 it's like a heartbeat, and now you suddenly know within 200 meters are are are. You have cards to four and marks. fourteen people or whatever. Yeah, yeah exactly. You, you got smart lane assist. You got the little the little lights on the new car. Oh, I didn't even think about that. Imagine that. Like the cameras aren't even on your body. The cameras are all around your house, and it's just mm. letting you know who's in your house and who's up to what. So imagine mm. laying there in bed and yeah. knowing exactly where every single human being was. And 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 whether you know what devices were turned on or whatever, mm -hmm. and then and and knowing whether or not anything deserved your attention. Now you you know that uh, they have that uh, on the iPhones a little bit. The sound recognition. Have you seen any, any of this? No. Uh, so it's an accessibility thing. It's in iOS 14, so uh, uh, most people can use it now. But you can go to the accessibility and say, hey, uh, uh, it, you have to disable the hey um, uh, assistant voice yeah. command thing to do this because it's always not going to say the s word right and uh uh it it can listen for like hey it sounds like there's a fire here you go here's a notification mm. oh it sounds like there's water running here's a notification it sounds like a door just a doorbell just rang here's a notification mm. you can pick oh, the types wow. of sound and it shows up on your phone as hey your doorbell might have just rang hey a dog might be barking hey there might be water wow. running and you so, can snooze them or set controls and things. But I, 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 I suppose that's a fairly natural segue into as long as we're talking about smart devices. I guess that's that's. Yeah, uh, I, 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 I hear there's a bit of a brouhaha about whether or not people think it's OK that uh, the Amazon is uh, linking up all their rings and devices and essentially trying to offer some kind of Internet to. Passers by so the ring sidewalk network mesh network is uh, 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 the the story here. I the 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 take that I read about this was that because uh, this is just for ring. This is not like Spectrum or uh, or uh, uh, Time Warner doing this. This is you have to have a ring doorbell or so, hero stuff. Yeah, and, and the and take that I saw was if you already have those devices, this is. This, this is not going to be any different than what you've already signed up for. So basically, uh, the the this is not a new idea. Uh, uh, Comcast, if you ever are out and uh, uh, you automatically get connected because it is like the most pervasive Wi-Fi network, I feel like, in, in, in the world, the Xfinity, the free Xfinity right. uh, uh, thing is always winds up finding its way to the top of your... Uh, uh, and, you know, and, available uh, Wi-Fi networks, but that is and, and the easiest parallel to this was when the iPhone first came out. Bandwidth was so you know they were so afraid that basically any AT and T router anywhere it would just automatically connect to uh, and 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 conduct your data services over. Yeah, in like I mean, six or something. The, I think that that was more of a a behind the scenes kind of thing to to make the traffic go. This is more of like. Xfinity says, hey, unless you opt out, we are going to use part of your 
machinery and part of the service that we are selling to you to create a free mesh network for other subscribers to use for and those devices for those for those devices uh this is different like bryce said in that this is not a isp who's saying hey uh, uh as part of a gift for you for being a subscriber you also can connect to wi-fi in places that you wouldn't otherwise be able to because on the back of our gigantic network this is ring saying uh all right, we're going to use your internet and create a mesh network. Um, and and it, this sounds like um, this is for Ring devices and Amazon Echo devices. My like, I, I I don't know whether the idea behind this is it can route you know voice commands and recognition faster through a mesh network or. Uh, making it easier to set up a device, you know, set up a, a doorbell and it says, okay, well, there's the network right here. I could just hop onto that and not have to worry about routers and stuff for right. We can figure that out all later. The uh, 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 JDS 3K has my favorite take. I'm so mad at Amazon about this. We should shoot their founder into space. <laughs> <laughs> but but but, but uh, uh, I did read a pretty good article that broke down where it's like, if, if you want to opt out, that's fine. Here's the link. But uh, in the author's opinion, there were really only four uh, legitimate use cases. Um, uh, 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 legitimate use case number one: you just hate Amazon, in which case, fine. Uh, of reasons out. not to do it, right? Reasons yeah. to opt out, right? Yeah. Correct. Uh, another reason: um, you are in a rural area and you have serious limitations on your bandwidth. Yeah, uh, yeah go ahead, opt out, right? Uh, another one: uh, you are IT savvy, uh, and even though, according to most IT pros, uh, seems like the encryption is pretty good and and there's no security or privacy concerns. Um, it occurs to you that somebody somewhere might at some point use an illegal or use your equipment to yeah. participate in an illegal, illegal activity. Definitely go ahead and do that. And then um, I forget the fourth one. Um, I'm sure I'll remember it in five minutes. But but but, but, but but there are legitimate reasons to to opt out. Uh, and, and you have to be using these devices. I mean, like, well, who's our I would love to hear if there are viewers out there who are using, say, an Amazon Echo device and don't use it for the voice commands or at all right i mean like like you you have to have like to use this you have to kind of be bought in on those products and i think a lot of the security issues you might have with a mesh network connecting other amazon brand devices would be similar to having an always listening microphone you know a shopping device in your home I, I i do think that this is likely a play just to make that installation process a little bit easier because it is i mean it's, it's not boring. hard but it's not the easiest thing on the planet like you can't just roll it out to a child and have them figure it out well and and and, and here on this property we have a lot of security devices and uh it it's so close to working the way it's advertised where i press one button like i want to change this one thing on all devices yeah and then it comes back with it's like you know nine of the ten devices said great we're yes. fully updated that tenth one is a little bit out of bounds <laughs> and it's like dude if that tenth one could just borrow from next door and yeah. say hey but but you know, here's the update. Let me let me let me copy you know, your homework. That'd be great. Yeah. You know, I, yeah. I, I, I uh, however, having said all of that, it's like, uh, man, nobody likes to be force fed uh, uh, participating in security questionable activities. Yeah. And, uh, you know, the uh, it, it, there are I, I, I can't help but look side eye at anything ring associated or, or Amazon associated. Uh, not that they have say a terrible track record with security, but I don't, I just don't like it listening to me. Honestly, do you know, I just don't. Do you, know, do you realize Bryce, I was this close to inviting you onto the rocket with me. Yeah. <laughs> now, I'm, now, now I'm glad I didn't. Good stay away. Yeah. Um, uh, okay. One last quick story. If, if we can, let's do it. We can. We can, we aim, and we will. Do you know about turns? T e r n s turns. Bur the, the dim birds. The, the bird. Yes. Dim birds. It's a bird. Oh man, I've been given the bird so many times. Uh, it's a little. It's a little. Uh, oh, look at a little bird. guy. It's a little guy. 
Well, we're going to pour one out, folks. Uh, about 1,500 tern eggs were abandoned on their South California nesting island after something scared them off. Oh, no. Was it a Pink Floyd concert? It, <laughs> it was not a Pink Floyd concert. Oh. Was, uh, it, was it was it was it a, a guy in a jet ski? Uh, not a jet ski, probably a guy. <sighs> Wasn't on a buffalo, was he? Not on a bu- buffalo. Not great swimmers, turns out. Yeah, thankfully. Uh, uh, did someone have a party? Like, were they playing? No, EDM? my god! Oh my god! The worst version of this is it's one of those dudes with the Iron Man hydro jetpacks <laughs> flying around, <laughs> doing his twirly. I belong on the chive flip. Yeah. Uh, oh. okay. uh, very close. A drone crash landed on the island, oh. and the mama turns thought it was a predator, and they have abandoned the island in the air. Oh no! How do you recruit them back? Uh, Can you? Are these are these uh, just doomed eggs? I think that they're doomed for the season. Um, we the the so drone people can't okay, feed okay. them. In uh, this is a uh, right. This is a nesting island. This is like not a public park. This yeah. is actually protected airspace. So okay. So so imagine no imagine we talk to Professor Scientist. Yeah, and he says they're definitely doomed. And we're like, so there's uh, absolutely. Uh, it's me, Professor Scientist. <laughs> Professor Scientist. Yes, Professor Scientist, thank I you have so a much. proclamation. You okay. should be here every week. I, these eggs are definitely doomed, right? I. That's what I. You, but you're stealing my bit. Oh, sorry. I'm here to <laughs> proclaim that these <laughs> eggs, they're definitely doomed. Okay. So 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 <gasps> so given that. Yes. They're pretty much just biological garbage. Well, I, 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 sure. Okay. We're so kind like, of like, getting like, out of like, Professor like, Scientist. That's more of like a... Professor Science, are these OBO? Uh, are these $50 uh, or OBO? Uh, <laughs> uh, real quick, uh, Professor Scientist, uh, uh, I, I lean over, I step on an egg. Like, so so that's no, like that's going to happen to all of them. Well, I, I mean, eventually, but now you're yes. getting into moral questions of, of, of where your yeah, lines well, and no, ethics but, are. But, but, but you assured me they're all going to die, oh, well, right? science is but a cold, uh, <laughs> uh, cold okay. world. That's right. why uh, I'm uh, the professor. Uh, still <laughs> nodding, I pull out of my backpack a, a Coleman butane stove, uh-huh. <laughs> a cast iron skillet, yeah, uh, uh, seasoning, uh, and I'm like, they're all definitely going to die, right? Uh, yes. Okay, great. And then I, uh, I nod to the horizon. I touch my ear and I say, we're a go for Operation Omelette. Uh, and I was like, uh, so, so, so they're all going to die, right? You're a real asshole. <laughs> <laughs> that is the not party what I boat was shows going up, and, then, and, 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 and none other than Jimmy Buffett himself uh, comes down. James. He's already strumming like oh. wasting away oh. in delicious turn egg of no. oh. I, I, Professor of Science takes out his, his pocket <laughs> portal and unfolds it, like all while making unbroken eye contact. Throws it on the ground and, and jumps through it. Before before reaching his hand out to pull it back down with him. <laughs> Grabbing a megaphone, I turn around and say, ladies and gentlemen, the Muppets. <laughs> all the Muppets are there. Professor and they're Science all uh, uh, pops his head back up and says, and you should all be ashamed of yourselves. And then, they, I say, they were going to die anyway. They're already dead. <laughs> I think we solved that one. I think, I think we saw that one. Thank you very much. Please uh, be careful where you fly your drones. Yeah, man. Uh, I, I, I do wonder if there's, if there's any kind of rescue thing for them. If, if, I mean, like if they could be brought to a hatchery or anything. Uh, that, that's a good, uh, may, maybe you could do that with, with, with some of them. Um, uh, right now, yeah, the island. Because the idea would be that they're either not warm enough to hatch or that they are going to hatch and there's not going to be any food. So, mm-hmm. like, you could theoretically solve for both of those problems, depending on where they are and what the rules about it are. I'm, I'm told, quote, the island is littered with eggshells, so it, some of these oh, may be too late. Oh, that might have also been a goblin. predator. Yeah. yeah, predator stuff. Okay. All right, question. Uh, question. Or, or uh, Brian's booze cruise. <laughs> <laughs> question. Also on the booze cruise, uh, 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 30% of these <laughs> eggs. Love, by the way, what a bargain. <laughs> Brian Brushwood, Jimmy Buffett, and the Muppets bring you on a fun-filled how, how, how booze cruise for an all-you-can-eat yeah. omelet buffet. <laughs> 
That's right. It, critically endangered omelets, by the way. Critically endangered. <laughs> Near the world's most dangerous species. omelet. Sorry. Hold on. Let me let me grab my phone. Beep up. Uh, 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 S word. Call Professor Scientist. <clears throat> uh, uh, hello, it's me, Professor Scientist. Okay, Who's listen. This? Uh, 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 we had an idea. What if we took 30% of the eggs and we put them in incubators uh, at a hatchery? Would that be good? Uh, I, they're probably dead anyway. <laughs> okay, but, 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 but we're going to make a heroic effort to do it, right? But here's the trade-off. The only person we could get to promise to move 30% of these eggs is a juggler. Uh, well, and he has thoughts <laughs> and a webcam. Are you about- like a low rent <laughs> jigsaw? <laughs> like, why are you giving me these? This, I'm, how'd you get my number? Prank have- caller, prank caller. <laughs> Sorry, the quiche is done. <laughs> you have 30 minutes to validate my morality. Jeez. <laughs> Uh, oh. so there we go. Uh, oh. come back soon, turns. Um, <laughs> alrighty, well, uh, that'll do it for today here on Weird Things. Let's do some picks. Uh, mm. uh, this is the part of the show where we suggest some things that we've liked lately, uh, uh that we might pick. Brian and Justin, yeah, show them how it's done. Hey, uh, you got one? Um, uh, mine's kind of a reverse pick. Uh, uh oh, uh, yeah, okay. <sighs> Se- reverse se- pick. Uh, season alerted. five. Of- we are reversing the picks. The picks are now reversed. I love Kim's Convenience. Period. New sentence. Uh, season five of Kim's Convenience came out. Mm-hmm. Um, season five of Kim's Convenience begins with a Skype call in which one of the main characters, Jung, is in Southern California. New okay. sentence. The actor who plays Jung is in Southern California to be Shang-Chi in The Legend of the Ten Rings. He's a now a Marvel super god. Also, uh, Shannon, a, a, a fifth or sixth tier character, uh, is also getting a spinoff. Uh, get, guess how much I liked the first episode of season five of Kim's Convenience. Not so much. Wait a minute. Shannon is 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 yeah, getting is getting a spinoff. So yeah. it's just going to be the Shannon show. I mean, what I saw first episode of season five already looked like the Shannon show featuring one Skype call from Jung. Gotcha. Meanwhile, like Kim Chi is like like he definitely is not wearing his hair the same way, but is trying to make it look close enough to. But so that would happen any. I mean, I mean, this is late. Yeah, late late season. Yeah. Uh, uh, comedy shows uh, or dramas like you know stars uh, because that's around the time when contracts lapse right and so now you're now you're doing new deals and and everybody's everyone's crushing it they're all doing a really good thing it's just that it's it's a bummer because this show appears to be uh expiring with a whimper not a bang and in fact i think uh the guy who plays jung said so that that the fact that there's no send-off special no like just they're sort of just fizzling and then there's going to be the shannon show uh, I believe he used the word slap in the face is what it felt like. And and you, boy, man, I didn't expect to feel it so starkly from the end of season four going into season five. What was this? Was there controversy with like the, the original creators leaving halfway through this season or? I don't know about that. I don't know if I heard mid-season. that. Yeah. The, I th- that was this, the reason that they stated that they were not going to make another season. Oh, because they were done with this. This was their final in, season. In Troy and was now done. They were, they were, okay, I, I guess that's what I I mean, thinking. it's just everybody quite literally is phoning it in at this point. And, and, and I normally don't notice those things. Uh, uh, also, Janet, who has spent four seasons as an aspiring photographer, at the beginning, episode one says, I'm no longer an aspiring photographer. Now I want to do international humanitarian work. Like she said, that was the end of season four. That was, no, that was uh, season four. Well, so she, which yeah. she, she does, but she comes back and is offered a photography job and then makes sure everybody understands yeah. that, and that now she wants changing. to do this. That, yeah. Um, which sounds un- 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 uh, unpopular opinion. Uh, Go ahead. Kim's convenience. Great joke writers. Great, great, great characters. Cast. Always been a bit weak on story. Like there oh, are. Yeah, it's a sitcom. Are, oh yeah, it's a sitcom. Well, no, but si- uh, there there are great sitcoms yeah. that have that build up big, big, big relationship moments. And they have them pay off. In fact, oftentimes they are the most defining moments of those series of when 
Jim and Pam get get together or uh, like there's there's all these kinds of things. I was kind of I never really truly recovered from Kim's convenience just slotting into being a certain kind of show like Schitt's Creek, for example, great at building up the big moments and then paying them off. Like when those emotional moments needed to pay off, they did. Uh, they ne- they they really kind of boofed it. I think not only on the 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 Jung Appa like uh, uh arc. Will they? Won't they reconcile? I I, 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 I I actually rather liked it because it was it was it felt more like real life. Uh, whereas they're doing the reverse in season five, where they're trying to wedge in a Jim and Pam moment between Gerald and Janet. Um, that's another thing is that that but and that was the end of season four right like and and I was like like oh really like yeah, yeah. that's that's odd like like that you haven't built it up like at all it just kind of feels like here are some available parts let's let's plug them in uh, I, I don't know I I just I I've never really been in sync with where they want to go writing wise uh, uh even even the Shannon Jung thing I I kind of felt like it was very adorable. When they were in when this, they, like when, when they one, were one wanted phase. the other one, yeah. the other one didn't want the other one, and then when they got together, it just kind of felt like, oh, we're boring now. This is a boring relationship uh, uh, between these two characters, and the show didn't know what to do with them. Right. And so, I don't and, know. And, and traditionally, that's what tends to happen. I mean, the the ex- the notable exception is being uh, the Jim and Pam uh, getting the, the office managed to uh, really stay interesting until Michael left. Yeah. Uh, Justin, you got any picks? Mayor. Mayor of East Town. Ah, Y'all they, up on this mayor? The, mm. good, the good horse show. Yeah. What well, it's this? funny because I actually didn't know. Uh, uh, I didn't I didn't watch it because. <laughs> mayor- <laughs> <laughs> what are you, Brian, on spoiler in time? <laughs> Uh, I didn't initially watch it, I should say, because Mayor of Easttown sounds like a fancy title. Yeah. Doesn't it? It sounds like a it sounds like a period piece about a stable boy. It does, right? Uh uh and and it should, much like Parasite, I would have seen Parasite months earlier if they had named it what I proposed it to be titled This that Scam and Ass, ass family. family. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> like if Mayor of East Town yeah. was named White Trash Philly Detective, <laughs> I would have been on it from like day one. <laughs> Sold. <laughs> if it would have been called White Trash <laughs> Philly Detective, I would have been like, like, oh my god, because if you like every scene where somebody is either drinking a Mountain Dew or a Yingling, <laughs> you'll love Mayor of Easttown. <laughs> Perfect. If you love the word water, <laughs> you'll love Mayor of Easttown. And it's a, it's, it is, it is a great uh, crime whodunit small town everybody knows each other the secrets run deep like uh but because everybody's dealing with each other constantly much in the same way that small towns do you just kind of turn a blind eye and you have some relationships that are a powder keg waiting to explode and some that are secrets that are kind of kept so uh we're i think three or four episodes in but uh a huge 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 fan kate winslet uh uh just falling out of control nice um uh I've got I've got a, a I've got a kind of a, a nice easy pick. Um okay. uh on uh Hulu they have the uh uh the the Fantastic Fox animated comedy King of the Hill and I've been making my way back through that. Oh. Uh, and hard hard to beat King of the Hill. Uh, I think. Uh just just good um, it's slice of life comedy. I don't is know. It, is I, it different? Because right. I, I assume the first time you saw any of those episodes were before you lived in Texas. Because I, I have yes. often said, even as the show was young and first running, I was like, it is a great show. I do not understand why anybody who does not live in Texas would find anything entertaining <laughs> about it. Really? Because everything feels like an inside Texas joke. Uh, <laughs> yeah. it's, it's amazing. Uh, but 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 I, I have mean, you noticed anything different visiting it now, having soaked in these waters for a bit? Uh, I think there are there are little bits that maybe resonate a little stronger. But I thought King of the Hill always played 
um, even not being from Texas. Um, I suppose. Yeah, I suppose uh, uh, if 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 I'm allowed to laugh at jokes I don't get on Toast of London, then, <laughs> then non-Texans yeah. can laugh at jokes I mean, they don't get I, about Texas. It's, it's, a, it, the, it's, it's a suburban story, right? It's, it's, it's all about the suburbs, and yeah. uh, the area that I grew up in is very suburban. Um, so, I mean, you know, things look different, right? Different parts of the country look different. Um, but in general, this, this wasn't, like, foreign or... Like I didn't step into text and be like, oh, it makes oh, it makes so much sense now. <laughs> I, I think that King of the Hill, like so many of the best Mike Judge uh, uh, work, like shows both animated and live action, are so grounded in their characters. Like those characters are kind of just iconic from the moment you meet them, and and you always know that they're gonna act like them. And I guess that's like to my to my Kim's convenience thing. Like there, there are times where like you're watching, it's like, oh, is that really how? That's not how I assumed that character was gonna act. Whereas there's never a moment with Hank or Bobby or or Peggy <laughs> that you're like, like, oh no, that's that's them. They're, they're just these they're archetypal. fully formed archetypal kind of characters that everyone's well it, when when they introduce a new element to it, you're 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 made more excited because it feels like you're delving deeper and it's not like they're deviating and going some right. different they're direction. Ne they're never pressing the undo button. Just, yes. just, uh, just yes. Anding themselves. Yeah. Where it's uh, uh, uh yeah, it's a new layer of the onion. Yeah. Uh, Joe, uh, jo do you, do you have a uh, uh, pick? Uh, real quick. Uh, Bo Burnham inside. Oh, I hear, I hear, uh, I, I've heard from comedy professionals that there are parts of it that are almost painful to as a performer you're going to need like don't watch the last 10 minutes of this by yourself. Wow. Um the fact that I watched it this weekend and then got on a plane for the first time in nearly 2 years to come here uh you regret being here no, already. No, no, it's like the exact <laughs> opposite, but the once you watch it I think you'll uh, appreciate the the irony of it. I mean the the individual songs like I I've had a lot of people. I've been a fan of Bo Burnham's for over a decade. And a lot of people always, you know, made the complaints like, oh, it's just a kid doing the early videos were like just a kid doing shock value songs in his room. And then he, you know, per, you know, all this other stuff. I, I can't imagine anyone watching this and not especially after we've all had such a universal experience of literally being stuck inside for the last year. Mm -hmm. I, I can't imagine anyone n watching this and not finding something deeply relatable deeply like moving and, and and i don't even mean moving like you're gonna cry and everything but like even like the comedy itself the jokes are just so much deeper and it's 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 his best work to date in my opinion and uh yeah i mean just it, it's on it's on youtube just watch white girl on instagram and then if you're not if you ain't sold by that there's no re use uh, telling you to watch it yeah bo burnham <laughs> is 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 an insanely uh funny and talented yeah. uh, uh multi hyphenate i guess as they say but uh i'm okay with this and i will watch it okay. wow. after this uh -oh. can we be done with talking about the pandemic <laughs> like that, give me a well, year give me give me Give yeah. me some time. Well, the before... interesting thing it it doesn't bring up really the pandemic. I don't think he even says. But any the, reason. but like you said, it matters because, because we went been, through this yeah. shared trauma. So I don't need to hear about Dr. Fauci it, or mass sure, or aerosol viruses. But it goes so I, much I don't deeper. want to talk about this trauma that I experienced over the last year. That's fair, but it yeah. it's it goes deeper when it comes to like he tackles introspection, suicide, a bunch of stuff that isn't directly pandemic related no but that's but, what you were thinking about when sure, you were alone for sure, a year and a half i don't want to think about enough. that yeah. that's fair i want that's fair shake your butt I think everybody this, shake your butt that's all i want for the next just, year i think just this is wants, part just uh, rump shake i just want rump shakers to play <laughs> 24 7 every show well, that then comes watch. out just say should we open with rump shakers and should we close with rump shakers and then should we play rump shakers a few times in the center <laughs> then that's jam out to white woman on instagram and you'll be fine no again and 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 and, 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 and both this is not a comment on on yeah. what he do because like, i would care about what he does because he has such an an, an uncommon idea for 
uh, yeah. uh, emotional resonance and creativity, yeah. and and he uh, he cares and just so clearly about it. A um, performer, an, a person on the internet, yeah. like there, it, it hits so many subtle things. I yeah, and, I just don't want everybody yeah. who's not him to do it. But, oh, oh yeah, no, <laughs> yeah. agreed, agreed. That's, I I, that's I agree with the, you on yeah. that. I agree with you a hundred percent on that. I I do feel like. This special helps. It's part of the grieving process. Once you watch it, you can put it to bed and move forward. Yeah. yeah. Now I'm, shake I'm your rum. Yes. <laughs> now you're a white woman on Instagram. <laughs> All righty. Everybody got their picks out? Everybody good? Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, for, <laughs> for Justin, Brian, and Joe, I've been Bryce. This is the Weird Things Podcast. It's been weird. Shake that. <laughs> All I want to do is a zoom, 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 and a boom, boom. Just shake the rock. Welcome to NBC Nightly News. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Okay. Hey, good show, everybody. That'd be my new ringtone. (laughs) Awesome. We'll take a minute here and come back for some after things. All right. Do we have a thing? Uh, I got a topic. Do we have an after thing? I got. Cool. We we also have. We also have the the. Uh, the question factory that is yeah. Joe Diamond, I can, like available oh, right. for, I can, I can give, for a live session. A live session, <laughs> sure. Well, I can give an update on all the oh, yeah. advice you've given in the past. And oh, how that'd be great. And how that'd be great. Not all of it was terrible. Like there were two or three things. <laughs> all right, everybody. Well, uh, we'll, we'll uh, we're gonna take a few minutes here. Put a few tunes on. Uh, coming up this week. Uh, we will have more ghost attacks for you. We just recorded one yesterday. Uh, I don't think we decided if that's going to be a bonus or a regular, but uh, um, yeah, that'll come out soon. I don't know because uh, we need one in the holster for um, when I'm gone to cover the mayor's race in New York in two weeks. So. I think... Only bummer is that's two weeks to hold on to it. But... Yeah, but there's nothing specific. No, I don't think. Yeah. yeah. I mean, unless something bad happens. But I mean, I guess then the other side is. I mean, it, if we just go about our business the way we normally do, then we now no longer have to worry about that problem. Yeah, that's true. Uh, we don't need to think of another time to do it, which is like my that's my 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 gut reaction. Okay. Cool. Well, uh, uh, then we'll probably go record one tomorrow. We will record one tomorrow. I will say that we we spent a bunch of time yesterday going over uh, stuff, and I'm 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 very happy with where 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 we're at, and I think uh, I think I think the people will be happy. Yeah. Yes. I I yeah. I think we came up with a lot of good ideas that will that are designed to make people have a very smooth transition. Yes. So. Uh, uh, June 29th here at twitch.tv June 29th we're back live on Tuesdays where we belong the ghost will be retired the new right. no more title ghosts. will be debuted that's right um, I was thinking we we should probably uh, 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 put some uh, find some new motion graphics for for the new yeah we can for the new thing which made me then think oh we should probably <laughs> settle on at least the color palette of the album art. Yeah. So we can, I can then s- tell, say to Bryce, hey, hey, here are the colors. Yeah. Get motion graphics with these colors on them. Yeah, that's, I, that's a good workflow. You that's, should do that. This is what's in you my head. I just want to let you know. <laughs> just a fun sneak preview. Like this is like the, like the trailer for the trailer. Yeah. We don't, uh, one, one of the, um, uh, I guess one of my, my philosophies with with designing stuff like like art graphic setups and whatnot um, is that things be simple. So yeah. like we don't really have a lot of motion graphics we need to replace for no. The I I just think yeah uh, like, like like stuff like like this little moving stuff behind yeah uh, the, the, little, the chat and the and, chat box and then um, a full screen graphic for like a title animating a yeah title thing. and then and then if there's any little little motiony thing that we can put if we do like a, a, a box with like a guest or something or some other screen like uh you mm-hmm. know just little little fun things yeah um but uh so yeah june 29 hit the bell hit hit our bell hit, ring, ring ring our bell and ring my bell um and then no cord killers today cord killers is off this week dom's in hawaii dom's in hawaii and uh, uh, 
I'll do a night attack some or not attack sometime this week. I ne I need to rebrand not attack. I need to rename it so that it is no longer a pun on I, I literally just almost blurted out a oh god a, a no. pun version of the new title <laughs> please don't do that um but uh uh but i i i've said for like two weeks now i need to rebrand this stream because i want to keep doing it yeah and i don't want it to be just a name based on night attack and i don't want it to be based on the new thing necessarily either i so kind of should just be bryce video corner hour I was titling it, watching videos with Bryce yeah. on Twitch. Just keep it simple. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. Uh, people know what they're getting. Sure. You're you're Bryce. Uh, they, watching videos. videos. Yeah. Watching them. I know. Rules on screen. Well, what, that's what, it. What are you gonna? What are you gonna? What else? What else you gonna know about it? Uh. Um. And then Friday, marbles on Friday. Marbles is back. Arbs. Summer training continues. When is the new season? later this year later this year later this year in fact i if we have time to talk about it during after things i'll talk about it during after things but i do want to give joe yeah some time since he's a, he's our since special he's guest here. Here. Yeah. yeah um but uh, uh summer training will probably last at least until the start of summer will be my guess gotcha so, uh what is that what marble summer start of summer uh july uh, june 21st oh yeah Not it's late in it's, summer it's later than you think it is. Yeah. Although you want to know what? It hasn't really been hot. So I guess I can't really complain that spring's been been too hot. I mean, it's been raining it's, a lot. It's been raining and it's normally the rainy season. Everything. I was talking to somebody else the other day, but it feels like everything's been pushed up. Like, because normally our rainy season is like February or March. Okay. And then we have a cold season from like November, December. But then with the winter storm and now all these rains and all the thunder. Are you it, see? I, yeah. Do you, do you get? Uh, do you see much of the lightning? Because uh, we're having crazy, very bright, very far away lightning. Uh, I don't see a ton of it, of uh, because our our back area is oh you're kind of covered up is there. a little covered. But boy, howdy, can we hear it? Yeah, it is. Oh well, that's a crazy loud. Thing. Uh, well, I guess when 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 there's close by, but like the ones I'm seeing are super far away, right? Yeah. But they're crazy bright. Yeah. Um. Uh, so it's strange. I don't know. I don't know. Probably because just. Probably weather. Probably the weather, the weather thing. It's, and it's the weather, you know. Mm. So. I, I was literally going to say people are farting too much or something. Like, <laughs> I, I. This is, these are the jokes you get in the interregnum <laughs> the free, between the shows. Between things. I, I, I save all of my good jokes for when we're live. I see it says, has Bryce ever seen a summer storm in New Mexico? I mean, I've seen summer storms. I've. <laughs> like we've gotten like what kind of esoteric question is that you ever, ever seen, seen a, a summer, summer storm, storm in, in new, new mexico, mexico? <laughs> wait, that's the kind of thing i would say yeah wait is that a thing i said no 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 that's definitely a question it's i asked not. very recently <laughs> it's not i've never heard you say did uh, i see you are you quoting brian is that oh, oh yes he, he says that's brian. brian oh okay what uh, is yeah no. get on microphone and Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> what are you doing? Sorry. Oh, oh no, no, no. Uh, on this monitor, it looks like my face is blown out, and I wanted to it's move not. that flap in. If, if oh, you it see was it on a ghost flies. attack. It was on a ghost attack. Yeah. It was on okay. an early. Okay. Oh, okay. And it was. Oh, <laughs> it's so weird. <laughs> All right. If you promise I'm not blown out, then I'll not worry about it. I, every every week, I'll continue to promise that you're looking good and being seen. You're looking good and feeling great. Alrighty. So yeah, so uh, uh, if you're if you're free to stick around for after things, we'll we'll do that. Yeah. Uh, we'll we'll start by by kind of getting an update with you. Cool. And then if we've got time left, I got something we can talk about, or we can just cut out when we gotta cut out. Cool. Did, uh, did you need? Did anybody else need a break? Go use the bathroom. No, drink. I'm good. All right. I've I've just been farting too much. Yeah. Well, people are doing that too. I'm here. Mm -hmm. So. All right. Here's the after things podcast. Then in three. Two. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to the After Things podcast. I'm your host, as always, Bryce Castillo, joined, as always, with Brian Brushwood. Hello. And joined, as always, with Justin Robert Young. Not indeed. Hail and healthy, uh, fair, fair traveler. Oh, but I do believe you've forgotten our always perpetually here fourth member of We After Things. <laughs> we are after things. We are after things. <laughs> Uh, that's right. We got Joe Diamond joining us today. Hi, Joe. <laughs> Glad to be here. 
uh, I wanted to kind of chat with you a little bit uh, first, Joe, and and see uh, you you've asked advice from the After Things Council before. Yes, and it's cost me thousands and thousands of dollars. None of it worked. Okay, it's awful. That's why I came all the way here for it. Okay, just wanted to let you know. I gotcha. think we're good. We're, and, we're done now, right? And your, and your problem <laughs> is, <laughs> and your problem. Uh, yeah, <laughs> no, I, quite the, the opposite. Uh, so but, the first. Quick background, quick refresher. The first time I wrote in was 2016. I just, I was doing weekly shows in uh, a haunted mansion turned uh, arts park. There's At the time, there were just like painters and musicians, and I was the weirdest one there. But now there's people who do like, you know, healing arts with like massage therapy, and there's a woman who does like Reiki and all this other, yeah. all, all this other cool stuff. And I was just doing like, a mentalism show. I could fit 13 people at a time in the studio. And originally it was just like, okay, I'll do this alongside gigs, like just to like, you know, yeah. have my own venue and everything. And very quickly it went from a monthly show to a weekly show. And right when I was transitioning to a weekly show was one of the first times I, I wrote in. Uh, and yeah, if, just, if, if, if I remember correctly, the question was basically, uh, uh, we're getting regulars now, and yeah. what what do I do? Well, that was about the next the part. That, that, that was the next part. Yeah. It, it, it was a question of of generating new material for, to reward the regulars. Yes. Yeah. So I I wrote well well the first time it was more so like promoting. Uh, uh, Andrew suggested I reach out to escape rooms because they were like blowing up right around the same time as yeah. well, and I did a lot of cross promotion with escape rooms as well and so forth, and. Yeah, so I wrote a I wrote a new show specifically designed for that venue because originally it was just like my house party set, you know, which I could do. I designed to be performed anywhere. It's like, well, I'm not anywhere. I'm in a cool venue. What can I do only in this room? Well, I can turn the lights out. Well, I can, you know, move the hands on that clock over there. Well, I can pick up this Ouija board off the shelf or whatever. Uh, and because people are coming into my space rather than me coming into their space, you can like, set all that up, set all that up. But also like, it's, it's okay. Like if I, yeah, if I brought in, you know, I'm sure there are some clients that would not be okay if I brought a Ouija board to their house, but because well, and, and, they and bought also, a ticket, they, would they know it's a haunted mansion. Suspicious of it. You know, it's well, like, too. like yeah, hi, exactly. I'm here to do a show in your house. Let me just set this here, this yes, here, exactly. this here. Yeah. And exactly. Whether it's <laughs> let yeah, me guess what five Satan. objects you're going to use in this routine. <laughs> yes, <this> exactly. Performance. <laughs> exactly. And so uh, the last time uh, I was here in Austin 2018 was when uh, Brian you and I talked a lot about, you know, working on new material and because there were regulars coming back and your suggestion was, yes, of course, always write new material, but also figure out how to basically digitize it or what we would say now, make a virtual format of it and can't tell you how prescient that was, <laughs> and how perfect it was in the last 14 months, but so yeah, so I wrote the I wrote the new show and it you know did that for a year and a half before literally I debuted I debuted the new show, played it all throughout 2019, took a break and then brought it back Friday the 13th in March, did a show on the 13th, on the 14th and on Sunday my state was shut down. So I transitioned completely to online at that point and a big thing of what we were talking about at the time was more so like from the promotional standpoint of getting the word out there. Like the show will always be there, have something that you can constantly rotate and have, have different things. So for me, that became Facebook live just because that's what a lot of the people in my area were on. Uh, that's where a lot of people were finding me. And the other thing was I could promote, I could do a Facebook live on my page, but share it to all like the local pages in the area. So I was able to be very targeted without having to, pay through the nose with ads yeah, right. and, and, and make a genuine connection with people. Like that was the other thing. So I developed a lot of material that could be done virtually where it's just me on camera and people are just like writing in. Sometimes I could bring them live and it turns out that was very handy come uh, March of 2020. I did three Facebook live shows. Each were an hour long and each had completely different material. So I started off, whereas every at the beginning, everyone was scrambling, trying to figure out, what could work. I started with three hours of material for a virtual show and was able to whittle it down from there. And like virtual has been amazing. The fact that I can do a, you know, a company party for 
LinkedIn in Washington, D.C., you know, at two o'clock and then be on a podcast in India at four o'clock and then, you know, not have to drive home for dinner was was really, you know, not going to lie. And all the years of being a professional entertainer was really nice. My wife appreciated it because I it wasn't like, hey, GPS says I'll be home in an hour, but with traffic, it might be an hour and a half. So yeah. maybe wait on making dinner. It's like, nope, she heard I turned off Zoom and was like, hey, you want me to order pizza or hey, you want me to start dinner or, you know, whatever. Yep, yeah, that's fine. So it was so having you lighting that fire to like actually like move to completely online because there's a lot of and Justin, you and I were talking extensively about the the issues of many people in magic. Uh, and one of the things that I kind of still was holding on to was Oh, but it's a it's a live format. The whole point is you're in the room with it. It's you know it's this. It's not on a screen and everything else. And yeah, all that went out the window. If there was it was pretty much mostly gone. But by the time I started doing virtual shows, it was definitely well, gone. Yeah. There are two things uh, that I think you are in a very unique place for. Mm -hmm. Number one, um, it is very hard to or uh, it's very hard to make somebody laugh uproariously and clap and stand alone in a room. Uh, yes. It's also hard to make somebody terrified and creeped out and uncomfortable yes. in a safe theatrical setting. So sure. by, by focusing on, sp on spooky stuff, like it's kind of like for the first time, the deck is stacked in your favor. Yeah. Uh, emotionally speaking, like you yes. can terrify people. Oh, my, alone my Halloween show was just called lights out. Cause the rule was you had to watch, with all your lights out. So you, you so if someone did switch to the grid view, it was just all these computerized glowing faces and when I held a creepy doll missing an eye in in the camera, like that's the other thing. Like the smallest I, I did a corporate event for yeah, a couple hundred people. It was like 5 600 people up on here, you know, 2 300 screens something like that. And you know, I was able to do, you know, a packet trick like Max Maven's Wave like for all those people at once, you know, yes, I was using one person, but also just having, again, going back to the material of like being able to communicate with people without needing anything back. One of the big things that I heard a lot of magicians saying at the start of this, and I'm still hearing is like, oh, I can't do virtual because I'm the kind of performer that feeds off the audience's energy. It's like, well, yeah, but like, did Lynn manuel Miranda say no thank you when he was asked to like write music for Moana because like well I'm not going to be on stage singing it and getting the audience like no like it's just another aspect of what you're getting and or yeah, what you can I offer to that's people. also shows limitations as a performer and, oh yeah and absolutely there's, uh, and there's just absolutely. kind of cowardice to it but uh, I, I would say that what we found throughout that process over the last few months uh, is there is an electricity that can be generated by yes. watching something online. Now, I'm not telling anything new to the people watching us live on twitch.tv slash night attack yeah. or <laughs> uh, people who have watched us throughout the years and have built these friendships mm -hmm. and everything. Like we are a long form proof of concept example of this, but I was glad to see a lot of magicians kind of thrive uh, yeah. uh, doing it and, and a lot of other kinds of entertainment, trivia, entertainment, pub quizzes, uh, uh, a lot of team building. Saw a lot of, uh, like escape room type things or haunted, uh, haunted mm -hmm. tours. A friend of mine, uh, shout out to, uh, Christian Cadigal who runs the San Francisco ghost hunt. He, you know, he has to write, he has all this material, but he has to structure it based on where they can walk. And I said to him, well, dude, now you can do a tour of all the places you can't get to feasibly on a two and a half hour tour walking around. You have all this material ready to go. Like you've got a whole extra hour that people who have already seen you and love you are, are ready for. And he, he did it and it was insanely successful. Uh, he was him and Justin Willman were like my wife's two favorite zoom shows. Like that's the other thing in a single month I saw Justin Willman, uh, Piff the Magic Dragon, um, who else? A, a bunch of people. Josh J, Ben Seidman. And it's like the amount of money it would cost to see all the – wait for them to come to town, see buy tickets, yeah. go, get parking, or go to Vegas, all that stuff would have been in the thousands. And you're telling me for like 
just shy of 150 bucks, I got to do all that plus get merch from some of them. Like, yeah, are, are you are you kidding? Like, that's awesome. Like, that's that's amazing. Yeah, it it it, it it's a it makes a lot of financial sense. Yeah. Um, and and I think really a lot of this was just uh, people understanding that there was a market for it and that yeah. it, and that it wasn't just. Well, the other thing too for me is because I do tend towards the more weirder, you know, bizarre, esoteric, mentalism type stuff. Turns out there's people who are into that stuff who aren't in my area geographically. And so, like, I had regulars on Zoom. Unlike the hot MILFs, they're not in your area. Uh, yeah. Ah. Uh, yeah, exactly. Uh, you, you'd be surprised. So, one, <laughs> the first, so, quick side story. It's, but oh it's on God. topic. <laughs> no, oh, no, oh, no, 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 no. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. oh yeah. Oh, yeah. The very first time my in-laws came to see my show, uh, my wife and I have been dating just shy of a year. And she brought her parents to my show, and it was like a perfect bl- balance of 70% older white women, gray hair, turquoise necklaces, you know, all that stuff, you know, very touchy feely. And then because I do a lot of stuff with the local rock radio sh- station, yeah. you know, guys coming in in Slayer shirts and long hair, it was like perfect, like 70 30. And <laughs> of 70s and 30s of 70s yeah. and 30s. Exactly. Uh, but and my now mother in law at the time, you know, she had only met me three or four times, leaned over to Lindsay and was just like, there's a lot of older ladies here to see your boyfriend. <laughs> uh. And she's like, hey, they're paying him and he's taking me to dinner tomorrow. Hey. So that's fine. Uh, and now I had that opportunity to be gawked at by older women who aren't in the Midwest. Well, so, so, so here's my question as the world is changing mm-hmm. again. Um, I, I don't want to say back cause I don't know that there's any back to get to, Sure. but as the world is changing ag- again, do you find yourself uh, reluctant to go back on the road or, or, or hope? No, the exact opposite because now, okay. So just quick, I won't get into specific numbers, but just, on paper, I've booked a couple house parties and a couple like outdoor, socially distanced corporate events for the summer months. And all of them are 50% non-refundable deposit, which just so happens to be the cost of my virtual show. Right. So if they cancel for any reason, I now get to say, hey, you have, as a backup, a 45-minute, you know, produce there's an intro you don't have to do anything except send people a link you don't have to introduce me you don't have to have yeah. a mic you don't have to do any of this you just send people the link they can watch with their family you know we can have up to 100 screens and if you want more you know you you, you know, make them pay for it obviously uh you know to update you know you know upgrade zoom for a month or whatever you know for that specific client and uh you know and going from there so it's actually given me a security with going back because I know if you know you know anything else happens and I'm not just even talking virus like there there's flash floods in my area or uh, or crazy oh, yeah. in the yeah. Midwest we've had crazy winters you know over the last few years like the fact that like I could say like oh and if you get snowed in don't worry you're backed up all you have to do is give me the go ahead and a date and time and within this this and area that's, and that's a huge and element. I'll create the link and send it to you and you send it to everyone that's all you got to do that, that, that's that a is huge it. thing that happened is that we skipped forward about five years yes. in a year of technological understanding and so you could have done that two years ago and oh, and, yeah. and the answer yeah. that you would have gotten back is like uh, we're not very tech savvy. Like, yeah. Oh, I, don't, yeah, exactly. I don't think the that amount... a lot of people would know that. So it's like now, yes. though, everybody knows Zoom. Yes. Every, or or now the expectation is, oh, it's fine. You, you, you click the link, you mm-hmm. open the thing. Yeah. And to, and I know that we talked about other art forms branching out, but I think the benefits of you know, I was gonna say mentalism, but I think all good magic is ultimately about. Uh, the, the audience, you know, uh, uh, my friend Karen Henning, who did my tattoos, she said her definition of magic was it allows people to be the hero of their own story. And the fact that, you know, magic can get right to that, despite the fact that there's a screen in between, the fact that you can get everyone to follow along, like half my show is fully interactive with the entire audience. And then the other half, I bring people on screen with me. 
uh, and everything else is people following along. I do stuff like pendulums and other hypnotic stuff like the light and heavy arms and everything. And it's it. And, and I get to say that to like even clients like, look, if you book me for an in-person show, yes, it'll be fully interactive. But if you have 100 people, only about 20 of them are going to be directly involved and or on stage with me. Whereas if you do a virtual show, half of the show, 50% of the show, everyone will be involved at the exact same time doing the exact same thing. And that's, I think, a huge advantage uh, when, it, when it comes to those kinds of things rather than just, oh, we're going to watch someone mix a cocktail or cook an egg for 20 minutes. That might be one of the most shocking lasting changes of having gone through all of this is mm -hmm. like um, when it comes to team building events or special events or whatever, uh, at any corporation, if you have two boxes to check, one box involves you finding a babysitter, getting your husband to put it on yeah. the calendar, driving out, parking, going and doing the thing and all that stuff, and then doing the show. The other box is 45 minutes and you get to be uh, yeah. directly involved with it. I, I feel like that, that, I can't believe that's going away. I can't no, believe no, it's going it, away. It, 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 truly... it's, not, it's not going away. And the other thing that will always make it competitive is availability and price. Mm -hmm. And that's something that, that you can really, really compete at is saying like, okay, well, I can get this experience that I would normally get. Like if you're just looking at a menu for you, like mm -hmm. I think there's going to be people that are just going to pick that because it costs a little bit less. Yeah, uh, you can schedule it a lot easier, and and it is no must, no fuss. And and if you are booking team building or yeah. or any kind of birthday or something like that, when the goal is just have the people not hate it, yeah, and, and exactly. you got a bunch of five star reviews, then it's like, all exactly. right, well, and everyone knows now how many of those meetings really could have just been emails now. Yeah, like right. like people know that, like. The Do amount they? of conferences that are like <laughs> not, uh -oh. not fast of enough. All, of all the organizations, Bryce. <laughs> all right. What? Oh, I said that. Oh, you said that. I okay. Said that. What? I, yeah. I thought Bryce yeah. was. Bryce I thought Bryce that. was. Wow. Don't, don't give Bryce credit for my sass. Okay. I sassed right. my, I right. sassed my right. own. I'm a, I'm a man. <laughs> I take my own sass. <laughs> People uh, use Zoom too much. Uh, but not you. You're doing great. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thank, thanks for that. I love how Justin instinctually knows, oh, Joe's a magician. He needs the validation. Give it to him quick before I mean, he starts crying no, no, into no a your teammates. monarchs. Before, quick, quick. His self-esteem oh. is hanging by a thread. It's, you had that in, internal yep, <laughs> that goes. Uh, uh, uh Yeah, I mean, I, I, I think that... Um, you you are in you're in a great position but even like what you were saying before with other zoom mm -hmm. like kinds of things like showing somebody how to make an omelet showing mm -hmm. like you know there's a thing that we, we ashley and i still haven't scheduled but was given to us as a gift is like a a, a drag queen course in making oh, cool. sangria that was like very uh, highly recommended by by friends of ours uh, that Great. you know, you sit down on a Sunday and and they are hilarious, and then you make sangria and you get drunk and it's a fun time. Uh, those are things that, especially now that like you have the i the, the there's a critical mass of people who know what these things are. Mm -hmm. There's a good enough standard of quality in terms of cameras and internet connections and microphones where it can feel like something that can scale up to your television. People know how to put this stuff on their television. Yeah. Like now you can have a legit, like a, a back to the future Jetsons style kind of mm -hmm. interaction with this content. And, and that's something really powerful. And, yeah. and, and, and uh, the, now the, the availability is just through the roof on it where you can get well, something that interacts with you. Well, I mean, think back to, I, I, uh, you know, early David Copperfield and Doug Henning specials. Could you imagine what they would give to be able to see everyone at home watching their show? Can you imagine like what they would just like give to just see how engaged people are? Do they yeah. get up and go to the fridge at this moment? And like the fact that like, it's not just, perf if the ones who are like, I'm just performing to a camera in an empty room. It's like, no, there's people on the other end of the screen that you can see that you can interact with. And you don't need to hear them in order to get okay, energy now, back now, and all right, forth. Hold on. Now all I want to know is who's the most famous magician doing Zoom shows. 
Oh, probably Justin Willman. As bl- there's, are you, are you telling me there's not a a, a a a a Blaine like not not anything offered like like just like like David Blaine hasn't done one for the Kardashians at some point over the last year. Oh, oh, like a private thing. Yeah. Um you'd probably know better than me on that, Brian. Nah, I got no. Um, nah, I would wonder. I don't know. No, I'll have like, to I, uh, shake. My wife free. and I have seen uh, Wilman show a couple times, and he always has between seven and eight hundred screens. Um, wow. Every every he, show, uh, just what um, a phenomenally hard worker. Yeah, just, and, and and the shows are legitimately great. Yeah, like we saw a lot of I won't name any names, but we saw a lot of big names that very clearly phoned it in, and they were very clearly like, okay, doing this, and so we can get back to normal. And like, no, this was my one chance to see you. I'm here. I can see you. Right. Yeah. And like, I took time out of my day to see you I, just because I didn't come to the theater for it. And, yeah. uh, and, and yeah, and there was, you know, and there, some of them were just, uh, you know, they, it just seemed like they were, they were on rehearsal mode still. Like it was, it was clearly a new show for them, but they were still on autopilot. It was that weird blend of like inexperience and, you know, performers who are too experienced. They're just on autopilot and I don't mean, really wait, care. It was a perfect blend weirdly, of that, which you're was weird. making a case for that, that weirdo who says, I need the interaction yeah. of a live audience. And I, if, if anything, you're convincing me that there are people who literally need it, who cannot do a show without it. But again, I think the ones who are, able to you know take in the feedback engage people with you know the ch- like you do with the chat with you know the reactions all that stuff there's there's ways for, there's ways for the audience to show their appreciation rather than clapping for you you know rather than clapping for well okay let's be real clapping for the trick you bought like right. they that's that's what they're used to they're used to just doing the trick getting the instant approval back and yeah, sometimes you think, oh, that, I mean, like, even, this is true with live shows too, but especially with virtual shows, where I'll think, okay, that show went okay. But, you know, that's the thing where someone will tag something on social media saying, oh, so needed this, felt so connected, yeah. it was so warm and everything. And like, you, you never, you never know. I mean, and yes, that can happen with a live show as well. But if it can happen with both, then why, why dismiss it? I think uh, the big thing in, in corporate for the last few years has always been, at least since I started, was always uh, stage or close up. Are you going to stroll around for everyone, or are you doing a stage show? And I think the new conversation is going to be in person or virtual. I, I think that's if you're, the new if question. you're specializing in in one or the other. Uh, well, no, no, like like there are people, there are phenomenal performers who do great close up and do yeah. great after dinner stage shows. Yeah, and they'll do one, the other, or both. And when the client calls, it's like sometimes it's just like, oh, they're not going to have a break in the evening. There's no time to do a show. I mean, I definitely know, Brian, we've talked about this. You've been at gigs where you're like, walk around would have been 10 times better <laughs> than, than what I'm doing right now. Oh, sure, sure. Uh, yeah. Just going up to people and talking with them one-on-one would have been a million times better than me standing here. I'm going to do my best. I'm going right. to do the job. But like, the, like, how many times has that happened? And I think that I think clients have felt that with a lot of events. And I think a lot of them are going to be like, you know, hey, if this... I think, yes, I don't think it's going to replace anything, but I think it's just another avenue. Exactly. If if I were to disagree with any aspect of anything you just said, it would be that it's not that the old conversation was A or B, and now it's a new A or B. I think the new conversation is an A or B or C. Oh, like, yeah. We, no, we, I, I agree. We essentially I agree. have a new branch of magic yes, that is developing. Yes, yes. I'm, ta- I'm talking very specifically when it comes to, like, you know, corporate work, like that yeah. kind of things yeah. they say. And I think that's just where the conversation is going to shift. Um, and it's, yeah, is your event, you know, rather than asking how many people are at your event, the first question is going to be, is this in person or virtual? And, right. you know, and that's, I, I, that's I, the aspect. I do think that eventually the virtual stuff will slot in as more ephemeral than a physical event. I think oh, sure. that, that ultimately, while there will, like what we've proven is utility. What we've proven yeah. is the minimum viable product. What we've proven is that this bridge holds weight and, and it will continue to go. I, I do wonder what happens as we get into year two, year three, year four, year five, year 10, year 15 of virtual sure. events. And, and we, we kind of find out what their emotional resonance is in comparison to the guy that you see down the street 
That's so interesting yep. that you would couch virtual as the more ephemeral because um, a live event, you can go and be bad and then maybe people remember you being bad, maybe they don't, but it's over with and gone and it's in the past and it's evaporated. Whereas uh, you tell me that somebody isn't recording every single one of the, I bet if you go to, to pirate websites, like I bet everyone, like somebody's going to have, there's going to be moments where yeah. magicians will have shows that go very bad. And it used to be a very rare thing that a magician Somebody would have was a recording. bad show yeah. and happen to be recorded. Yes. And that was, I mean, you've been at those parties oh, yeah. where a oh, magician yeah. pulls out a best of magicians doing, you know, having yeah. rough shows. Like now, all of a sudden, I mean, I, I can conceive of a version, a, a version of things where virtual shows are more expensive because you know somebody somewhere is recording them like and, and sure and, and like um uh, uh, uh as, as context uh i i spoke at a funeral and somebody wanted a copy of it <laughs> oh, man. just sit with that for a yeah. moment and yeah. I had to say no three times and eventually relented and then eventually sent them. So somewhere out there is a bootleg of me speaking at a funeral. So uh, 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 I suspect that um, uh, like I'm not comfortable with any aspect of uh, the past two sentences that I just said. Yeah. But uh, 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 I have to imagine that as people have rough performances, Maybe sure. virtual becomes a little bit more protected. Maybe. I mean, Maybe. I, I think that that, but that horse is out of the barn. Like, you know, it's, it's, I would say if it's going to happen, it would have already happened in the first year where everyone's scrambling and there's a peak well, amount. No, of look, look, if, if, if the, if there's one thing that the internet has taught us is that understanding that we can burn our hand on that stove does not, does not stop us from burning our hand on that stove. Mm -hmm. Like people get fired for saying things on Twitter. They, they go on Twitter and make content for the website for free. So Mountain Dew can run a Dr. Disrespect ad below it and they get fired from their actual jobs for it. And then they come back and say, I'm very mad, like, and make more content for the free website. So it's like, Th there is or, or, or even worse, uh, uh, somebody finds out something they said eight years ago that that is uh, sure. th the world transformed around them. And sure. It didn't age whatever. Well or whatever. Like, like, yeah. uh, 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 however it is, we, we are very comfortable with the uh, or now that we're comfortable with the idea that the Internet is more permanent than we might think it is in the moment. Uh, we certainly don't give a shoot. <laughs> because uh, uh, we keep doing it, and and it, 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 we're, we're, like when we get fired from our job, we're just like, well, I'll, I'll just get another job. I mean, I'm not deleting Twitter though. <laughs> Smoke, <laughs> like that's a great website for free. Uh, I, I don't know. I, I think the virtual thing, uh, the, the the ephemeral nature of it, I think is more on the audience side. From the performer side, that yeah. is a trade off of the fact that you can do five shows in one day and you can still charge close to your corporate rate. Right. Like, yeah. you know, that's, that is what you trade is. Well, the is, other, the other thing I, I could see that happening with like a comedian doing a virtual show, but like with a virtual magic show or mentalism show, there's like, I mean, it's, it's just a grid of people like staring at their screens. They're not always actively engaged and laughing and everything. Like I could, I would, I would be interested to say, to see what happens when you show someone this quote unquote awful zoom show and someone watches it and goes, what are you talking about? It went fine. Like it wasn't great, but it wasn't no, like, no, the, 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 yeah, exactly. There's going to be some magical fair. eight minute super cut of, of somebody, every might be famous a name too, you've seen a few, few too many pops before the show. Yeah. And they think they can get through it, but instead they say something awful. They, can, they or, drop something yeah. or it's like, sure. or they, they, they you refer know. to you, you, the, the racially inappropriate person or whatever, yeah. you know. Yeah. They're magicians. I believe they can do it. <laughs> <laughs> There's now, nothing magicians okay. can do when, when, when it comes to ruining yeah. when their magicians, own careers. <laughs> when we told magicians nothing was impossible, we weren't daring them. <laughs> it wasn't meant to be a dare. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, this is a uh, uh, <laughs> this is a class of of humans, an adorable class of humans that got upset at the website, uh, magicianordentist.com. <laughs> oh, I, my favorite was uh, magician or uh, Christian uh, rock star. I 
That one actually oh. at least demonstrates some element of theatricality. Magician or dentist.com oh. was one of the funniest websites that ever happened. And it was a magician who put it up and yeah. then eventually wound up pulling it down because the, there were too many people that complained that they felt they the were being made fun of with because the their bad promo magic photos, photos. Oh, looked too much like because, dentists. Because they were accused of possibly being the type of person who could get a doctorate. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Who yes. could make seven times their salary. How how dare you how dare you insinuate that I make money. That I would get a medical degree. <laughs> uh, uh, uh hey uh, 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 we got any picks? Uh I, 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 yeah, I, I got I got a pick. I, I, hey, it's okay. a Netflix documentary series uh which let me just say this. I always say with uh, our modern craze and documentary series that about an episode too long, two episodes too long. Yep. Mwah. Murder Amongst the Mormons, three episodes, and they are jam-packed. Jam-packed. Uh, it is about a series of bombings in Salt Lake City in 1985. It involves uh, the Mormon church. Uh, the LDS, the uh, 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 delivery and uh, uh, publicity around a, uh, a a document that challenged some of the initial tenets of the the Mormon understanding of their of their founding with Joseph Smith and the golden plates, and it's got a bit of a twist that I won't even. Uh, well, you want to know what? I think it's been out for a while. So let me let me let me give the, the the half spoil if you have not already seen it that'll make you go and watch it. Uh they don't reveal until the final of the three episodes that they have extensive audio from the person who did it. Oh wow. Oh. And and that is just a great a great 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 thing to save. Wow. For the very end of of this thing, because you kind of assume that a lot of these things, even if you do, if you do find out who did it, they're in jail and maybe they say a thing or they they did one interview at some point. Extensive, shockingly honest, uh, a uh, uh, first person dialogue from the person who did it. So, wow. uh, and that's you know, first episode tells the kind of whole story up to the crime. Second episode is about all of the investigation. Third episode, when they find it, is just this person revealing, like, just villain monologuing uh, uh, for wow. for an hour as as you go through kind of the hidden history of everything. Uh, so there we go. Murder Amongst the Mormons. Uh, I have a pick that I cannot name or explain why it exists or tell you anything about. Right. Uh, but you can sign up for an email list to find out about it when it comes out. If you head on over to yolo420.com slash new secret, you can join a secret website, a secret mail listserv that exists only for one thing, to make sure that you're the first person to find out about the very, very important secret thing that will be happening. And I believe I put on there that um, last time I was this excited about a thing was uh, scam school. So uh, uh, it's very important. If you go to yellow420.com slash new secret, you can find out about it as soon as you can find out about it. Okay, go sign up. Uh, I've, I've got a, I've got a pick. I've been uh, using these a, a lot more over the past couple of weeks and I've, I've, was reminded of how much I'm enjoying them. Uh, the uh, just the standard AirPods, the Apple wireless uh, uh, earbuds. I I really like these. I know some people don't like the the standard AirPods because they don't have like a little uh, plastic grommet that yeah. sits in your ear. And so for some people, ear shapes uh, they may not fit. They may they may not stay in. For me, they stay in very well. And so I uh, I like them. I've been getting a lot of use out of them. They uh, work for you know hours at a time, and the the case will charge them. Um, I I dig them, um, and I think that the they have come down in price relatively uh, modestly, uh, but uh, they're they're I, I I like them, and they've the, got all the, the Apple ease stuff. of connection is just oh next yeah level like uh, it, not even needing to say 
oh, I'm going to be listening to these on my phone, so nope. I need to hit the button on my... Like, no, nope, it, it knows that your phone is on, and it that's what it connects you to. Uh, the, yeah, the MacBook. I, I, I use the AirPod uh, Pro. Uh, they are the first time, I think, since the iPhone that I was like, this is a capital A Apple product. Like, this is this is that, like oh crap, nothing else works like this magic kind of experience. When you're in that ecosystem, right. don't at me, don't at Android us. people. <laughs> I know you don't use it because it's the sure. worst, yeah. but uh, uh, I like it very cool. much. And now that I don't fly, I don't lose them on the airplane. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Joe, did you have a pick for us? Yeah, I have uh, one real quick. Uh, uh, for the last uh, few years, uh, my wife and I have really bonded over murder mystery shows. And this last winter, we went through all the Jeremy Brett Sherlock Holmes uh, memoirs of Sherlock Holmes, Adventures of Sherlock Holmes. Uh, they're all on uh, um, Audible. Uh, no, no, the the TV shows. Oh, oh, uh, yeah, the TV shows. Um, uh, BritBox, maybe. Yeah, BritBox, and it's. It's so well done. Some of the special effects, there's the, the Reichenbach Falls. It's clearly two stuntmen on on wires. But aside uh, when, from when, that, when when were these uh, produced? Late eighties, early nineties. Oh. Uh, so un understand, understand. Yeah, where, yeah. Where, where But like, they also here. did put two stuntmen on wires and threw them over a yes. waterfall. So at least there's that. That's kind of fascinating. Uh, but the the writing on them is great. Brett's performance is so charming, and I think I. I my wife and I, especially, we first bonded over the new Benedict Cumberbatch Sherlock and everything else. But being able to go back, I hadn't seen a lot of these since I was a kid, and just being able to go back and rewatch them and the cinematography on them is also like for a, for a made for TV British project. Some of the cinematography is stunning yeah. on some of these old episodes, and uh, and yeah, and I won't say how, but uh, there was an idea. Uh, since working virtually, I had to learn to work with a camera and everything. And there was one shot idea from the show that I actually directly incorporated into my Zoom shows. Nice. So, nice. Uh, so yeah. So it's it's worthwhile. And plus, Sherlock Holmes, the original stories, uh, can't beat them. Hard to beat them. Yeah. That, the, this is the Adventures of Sherlock Holmes. Yes, it, and then it became the Memoirs of Sherlock Holmes gotcha. uh, after after that. Uh, Google uh, says it might be on Amazon Prime Video as well. If oh, looking great! Yeah, yeah, check Watch them out. It on the way up to space yeah. with Bezos. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> In fact, just sit there, totally unimpressed with going to space <laughs> and just be refusing a... <laughs> to turn off your device during takeoff. Exactly. Yeah. Like, no, oh, no, 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 no earbuds, no <laughs> earbuds, <laughs> just loud off he's, your iPad. He's wondering Worth why he joined the Red Hat. Five million dollars. <laughs> <laughs> Why did he join the redheaded league? <laughs> All right, uh, everybody got their picks in. Yep. Yep. All right. Well, uh, for Justin, Brian, and Joe, I'm Bryce Castillo. It's been after. Hey. Bye, everybody. All righty. Hey, that'll do it, everybody. Good stuff. Good uh, we are gonna go offline. We are not doing cord killers today. There's no cord killers today, everybody. So uh, enjoy the rest of your Monday. We will be back. Uh, Ghost Attack. We're gonna go. Re we'll record one offline tomorrow. Yep. Marbles on Friday, 7 p.m. Eastern. There will be uh, a video watching stream sometime this week, as well. So, uh, thank you everybody for tuning in. We'll see you next time. Everybody say goodbye. Bye. 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 bye, bye.